Multimedia J Radio Style. What's up, everybody? Multimedia J back on the mic once again for another radio style segment. Before I have to go back to the salt mines later this evening, yes, for whatever reason, I guess somebody does like me there because we got more people getting furloughed this week and uh, I still haven't been told not to come in. So somebody likes me. I think the way this job is going to pan out is I'll be forever in a state of disposable temp limbo because the people at the site like me, but corporate does not. So that's this is basically just going to be an alternative to unemployment until I find someplace else that'll actually let me amount to something, which is what I really had envisioned for this job in the first place. I mean, this company, I, n- I, n- I never really thought that this company would be one that would like me all that much based on the way they operate and their current status as a company, so I'm not really all that surprised that they've shown zero enthusiasm for me, no matter how much enthusiasm I've shown for what I do. But that's another discussion for another day. I talk about that too much as it is. Let's talk instead about some other things related to YouTube. Now, the title of this radio-style segment is, of course, a nod to that old song, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? But Where Have All the Vlog Boys Gone really doesn't have... uh... It really doesn't have that much of a ring to it. I've been thinking about YouTube and the current state of things on here ever since I started doing regular video blogs again, and I've been seeing some of the crap that's, uh, that, well, let's just say that, uh, folks doing variety channels, as if things weren't bad enough for those of us who are still clinging to what some people call a tired, outdated format that doesn't work anymore as far as growing an audience is concerned, as if, as if us folks who are still doing old-fashioned variety channels on here that are tied to us as people and not some theme we're trying to exploit to make money off of YouTube ad revenue sharing and stuff like that, as if we don't already have enough to deal with, now there's shills going around starting fights in comments sections because people that are actually doing real variety channels based on themselves as human beings and not some commercial doodad like what we've been seeing a lot lately there are actually people going into the comments sections on people's video blogs and starting flame wars because of this stuff i'm not kidding just the other day i saw a variety channel vlogger get made fun of and actually have have a very lengthy argument with someone in the comments section on their on their youtube page because, uh, or on their uh, videos page, because, of some, oh, you're not doing it right, you're running a variety channel, those are never popular anymore, nobody likes variety channels anymore, if you want to make any real money off of YouTube, you gotta do a theme, and a constant theme, and regularly do this, and he's like, I just want a darn YouTube page, I don't want to do all the commercial stuff, and stuff like that, and, uh, the fight just dragged on and on, but sad, folks, we've got shills out there being fanboys for this new style of YouTubing these days that has utterly, that has utterly ripped the U out of YouTube so much that if YouTube didn't have any brand power of its own, the folks in charge of YouTube these days would probably just come up with a new name for the site. Because uh, there's no you left, except for anybody who's considered outdated and not worth subscribing to and all that other crap. Now that YouTube has a best practices manual and SOPs and stuff, just like being at work for Pete's sake. The thing is, people are noticing just how fake YouTube is becoming these days. I mean, I myself have been pretty unnerved lately. When I started doing the black and white vlogs and uh, other stuff besides gaming videos or or even anything for my major series is... When I took time out from the major series that I do to talk about bad stuff going on in my life and how rough things are for me right now, people actually started unsubscribing. Really, how fickle are people these days that they're that picky when it comes to free entertainment? How many more times am I going to have to say that this is a variety channel, no matter how outdated and outmoded people may think that kind of stuff is these days? There will be times when I don't make certain types of videos for extended periods of time, and there will be times when I do go off on a tangent and talk about life for a bit, because I don't know what's been going on to me for the last year or so. Oh, oh, sorry, I almost forgot. My entire life has almost completely fallen apart over the last year. Is that not worth discussing at least a little on this channel? Especially when it's a personal, hobby, recreational, variety channel that's tied to me as a person and not to some sort of thing that's going to be commercially exploited for monetary gain? 
It's disgusting just how fake YouTube is these days. Here's a blog entry. If you can stop giggling about the name of the website, it's kentballs.com. <laughs> All you people with like middle school sense of humor are like, he said balls. <laughs> well, I'm going to wait a, a little while for you folks who stop giggling here. But uh, kentballs.com, guys, yeah, DJ, well, the subtitle says it all. DJ, blogger, nerd, gamer, planted snugly in Oregon. Uh, he's got a DJ service, I guess, and he's got plugs to it as well. But he's got a, there's this article. I was reading about video blogs and is vlogging dead because of all this crap that goes on YouTube these days. I was typing stuff into Google, and this was one of the results. And here's an article, and I hope the uh, author of this blog, I'm going to post a link in the description right to the article, but I hope this guy doesn't mind me reading uh, a bunch of this stuff on the, in this on this on YouTube in this video. But check this out. When I stop following a vlogger is the is the title. I love YouTube. I really do, and I love vlogs. The idea of vlogging, and while I did it for two years and I really enjoyed it, I found out I was trying to move into something else that wasn't vlogging and wasn't what I wanted. So, oh, okay, so slightly awkward sentence structure here, but already we're seeing what the point is here. Check this out. I found out that most vlogs are trying to do what they do on TV. They have a set, they have fancy graphics, and they try to do really interesting sketches or skits. Why are they trying to be old media when what they started with, a.k.a. new media, was what made them interesting? The perfect example of this is Philip DeFranco. Now, that name rang a bell for me, but I didn't know. I'd heard it before, but I didn't know who it was. And for the benefit of anybody else who's not too familiar, it's Sexy Phil here on YouTube. Or Straight Edge Phil if you're a certain type of punk rocker. But uh, anyways, uh, the perfect example of this is Philip DeFranco. The guy was just a regular Joe on YouTube, talking from his office, from his living room. And now he has a set with a special couch that he never sits on. And everything is manicured to say, this is the image I want to present to you. But none of it is really him. It's all made up, and it's vlogging because that's his job, not because he really wants to do it. It's also changed. It's a show, not a vlog. Now vloggers can't be taken seriously on YouTube. A vlog is something that you do on the side, on top of the regular YouTube gig, where you create music or do skits or make insane, wacky videos, because now YouTube is a competition. YouTube used to be, this is my life, take a look at it. The first YouTube ever is proof of this, as it was nothing but a day at the zoo, and poorly shot at that. Of course, I'm, I'm kind of doing some editing on the fly here with how he wrote this stuff, because it is kind of clunky to read. Now YouTube has YouTube celebrities who go on tour and perform for people and hold conventions. And I'm not saying that's bad or that's wrong, but it's all, it's also not really what I want for my YouTube. But it's harder and harder for my, for my version of YouTube, the stuff I love, to be the stuff that people care about or want to pay attention to. Yeah, this is really, really awkward to read. So I'm going to do some ad-libbing here. Sorry to the uh, apologies to the author, but this looks like it was very hastily typed up with some of the... Or maybe I'm just too much of an English nerd... <laughs> <laughs> I am a nerd after all, so I'm looking at things like spelling and grammar and stuff. And yeah, whatever. I totally should one of these days like marry a librarian or something like that. Okay, that's another discussion for another day. <clears throat> I think this can all be traced back to Lonely Girl, who set up a lot of people. A reference to Lonely Girl 15, of course, the first famous fake vlogger, which sadly has become the, uh, the, the standard for all these fake vloggers out there these days. And then became a show, and then she left or died. Well, the character did. Then suddenly the fake was the standard. If you're not better than the fake vlogger, then you're not a good vlogger at all, and who cares? I don't care if a vlogger is shooting using his old iPhone in portrait mode, as long as they have something interesting to say on a topic that I actually care about. The company that made the flip camera did huge numbers because they made a camera that everybody could buy, shoot with easily, upload to YouTube with, and how long did that last? Not long. Almost as soon as everyone was shooting on a flip to get that quick and easy vlog with, everyone switched over to full HD cameras, DSLR cameras like the Canon, etc., etc., etc. In order to vlog and be considered worthy of following, I can't just use the camera built into my phone or my computer. I have to spend thousands on a lighting setup and a set in my office and a camera. And that's when I stopped vlogging. He talks about how uh, he talks about how vlogging is dead. The viral video is dead. YouTube is dead. And he has way more fun with podcasting because of the lack of the whole production value burden of not burden, but barrier to entry that exists these days. Darn if that ain't the truth. It's really sad that this is what YouTube has deteriorated to. But sad but true, as I mentioned earlier, with that little uh, argument that was going on between the sellout and the person trying to do the outdated outmoded variety channel 
Actually, I've been kind of, uh, in, I've been running into this stuff myself lately with uh, a video that I was actually, that YouTube's algorithms actually recommended to me. A while back, I had Lizzie Bennett, episode 95 of the Lizzie Bennett Diaries, constantly being recommended to me. And uh, in with YouTube's, like, recommended video thingies, I don't know why, but it's not exactly the kind of stuff I'd watch normally, but I, I watched it. I was like, yeah, this is somewhat interesting. I think I'll subscribe and stuff like that. And uh, it was pretty neat. Uh, this is, I guess, someone in grad school doing this skit on the side with some of her friends and had, had a really good camera and stuff like that. But it really is kind of what this blog entry is talking about here. And ultimately, it's a fake. It was a fake vlog. Uh, the lady involved was actually just acting. The uh, The living room was set up like a set if it wasn't a set itself. And... Here I was, first watching this stupid thing at episode 95. At episode 100, she called it quits. Whoop-dee-doo. The end. Oh, you know, it's over. And, you know, talk about a boilerplate sellout response. I know, not every I know you folks don't want me to end this, but this has been an interesting chapter in my life, and I think it's time to move on. Yeah, sure, whatever, lady. What a way to show to everybody that you were just playing around for exposure or something like that what she gets some kind of acting gig or some kind of television gig or something like that because of her pretty face i mean seriously this is the very core of what's wrong with even so-called video blogs these days when lonely girl 15 that scandal happened several years ago it was an exception amidst a sea of vloggers here was a fake vlogger who was really an actor in a fake bedroom that was really a set somewhere and doing a video blog series that was really just an experimental alternative way of getting people to watch a show that was an, that was an outlier back then nowadays it's become normal enough to become the norm and deviations from it get made fun of but as much as I can sit around making fun of this stuff all day, let's not forget about one of the rules of capitalism, namely Adam Smith's invisible hand. As much as people may be infuriated by how fake and commercial YouTube has become these days, what gets the traffic? Who gets the viewers? Who gets the subscribers? That's right, the sellouts! It's just like... It's just like Walmart, people complaining about how Walmart treats their people and how they'll do absolutely anything, even ruin people's lives to make their prices as cheap as possible. Of course, talking about people making starvation wages working in their stores and Walmart, reading, uh, Walmart leading retail's race to the bottom in terms of how awful it is to work in retail these days. Sad. Barely 20 years ago, I was a little kid. I was thinking, you know what? My dad worked in supermarkets. I'm going to work in Ames department store when I get older. <laughs> Ames is gone. Working in retail is terrible. Yeah. But despite all of this, when you walk up to somebody and you ask them on the street, would you pay significantly higher for basic part, basic things like food and clothes and stuff in life, would you pay notably higher prices for all that basic stuff in life if it meant that you would be putting food on a fellow American family's table because they can get paid more? You'd be surprised how often the answer is no. No matter how much people flip their lids about corporate greed and large companies ruining everything for the little guy, the very thing that drives this greed in the first place is still very much alive and well because people just want cheap, 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 and more cheap. And they really don't care what it means for something to be cheap, what, what kind of unintended consequences that could have. And then people have the nerve to stick their noses in the air and flip out about something like, oh, whoops, those cheap children's toys that came over from China have lead in them and our kids are getting contaminated by their own toys. Or, oops, that baby formula has melamine in it. It's poisoning kids in China and good boys and kids here. Uh, cheap, 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 and more cheap, no matter what. Folks, again, this is becoming a worn out cliche on this site, but I'll say it as many times as I need to say it. Actions speak louder than words. And in the case of YouTube going all fake and stuff, again, actions speak louder than words. People supposedly hate this stuff, but what gets the traffic? The stuff. Seriously. Is that how masochistic our society is these days? That people who dare to broadcast themselves, as the old YouTube slogan used to go before that slogan got pulled for whatever reason all those years ago, that those people have to actually get harassed because they chose not to have a fake, a fake vlog or a fake channel? 
seriously, how low can we go as a people to be putting up with this kind of stuff? I have been getting some feedback on since the relaunch of Play Some Stuff as more of a Let's Play-ish type thing rather than straight up resembling reviews all the time. A lot of it has been negative. One thing that I, one thing that's popping up is, oh, boring. Oh, you stutter too much when you're doing your commentary. Oh, you're, you know, you're horrible. You know, you should go back to the old way. Your old way was way more interesting. You're definitely going downhill in your old age, blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. The reason why I'm like, and, uh, and, uh, when I'm playing those games is because I'm actually doing live commentary. Yes. My honest live commentary while playing games like that is getting dragged through the mud by all these fake reviewers and let's players out there these days who cheat by pre-recording their gaming footage and then talking over it after the fact in post. Oh no, seriously. Why do you think all these Let's Players have such perfect commentary while playing a game at the same time, when actually trying to do live commentary is, is akin to distracted driving, for Pete's sake? Here you are trying to do one thing, you're trying to think, talk, and do something physically, namely play, manipulate the controls and stuff like that and play the game. You're trying to do all this stuff at the same time, and us being human beings comes into play. Naturally, someone, especially in a game like Guild Wars 2, where there's random stuff happening all the time, is going to be distracted same thing in skyrim with how well they programmed the radiant stuff in that game like radiant ai radiant story etc you know all of this stuff that creates this living breathing world in skyrim makes it a hard game to talk over in real time and then even some of the grand theft auto games are getting like that too but oh no 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 i'm something less than some of these let's players out there because i'm actually doing real commentary as i play the game Believe me, more people do fake live commentary than you'd think. Sometimes people slip up and they admit that the footage is pre-recorded. Then you have folks like the AVGN coming right out and saying, sh with his, uh, by showing in his uh, how to in his how to episode on the making of a nerd episode, he comes out and he says that okay, here's how I do it: I record everything with burnable DVDs, then go in afterwards and do commentary over the top. But because the general public isn't as familiar with this kind of movie magic, even on something as mundane as a gaming video on YouTube, I get to get made fun of and or panned because I'm some moron who can't half talk while trying to talk and play a video game at the same time. Will this fakeness on YouTube never stop? <sighs> Darn right I'm furious about this. And believe me, uh, anybody else in this, in this situation would be furious as well. This fakeness on YouTube is disgusting these days. But the sad part is, people like the fake stuff. Hence all of these fakers and actors and fake vlogs and shows like what I mentioned earlier with that old Lizzie Bennett thing. These folks get all the views, the traffic, and the attention and stuff while everybody else who actually gives a darn about what they do and is just doing this stuff for fun gets buried. You know, I've been watching this AM station that I mentioned earlier with the goofball video they did. You know what the sad part is? The guy that runs that radio station who tried a few video blog type videos to drum up publicity for his station like that, the sad part is he's probably going, that station is probably going to not post very much because they're not going to get much of a response. When the reality is more along the lines of YouTube is just so fake and commercial these days that if you're not doing anything but what's in that SOP book that all the partners and content creators get and other people can download off the internet pretty easily, you can forget about ever having any decent sized YouTube audience. I know there's also the old media, new media thing to consider as well, that this guy might not be familiar with how he can turn, how he can not, how he can make it, you know, his YouTube channel work for the radio station without cannibalizing the radio station's listenership and actually creating a feedback loop where people that uh, listen to the radio station want to watch the YouTube videos and vice versa. Yeah, I really think at this point that these attempts by this station, known around here as having an actual human face to it in this day and age of commercialized corporate radio, that uh, that, that this channel is just going to pitter-patter out and just f fizzle out because of the sad state of YouTube these days. And what a pity that all this talent out there is getting passed over because, oh no... They don't have an HD camera. 
And they don't have fiber broadband so they can constantly upload HD stuff all the time without hitting a bandwidth cap or having the video take two days to upload. Oh, what a pity. Heavens me. (sighs) Yeah, indeed. Where have all the vlog boys gone? (laughs) That has, that is like, no, that's just terrible. I shouldn't have used that as the title, but whatever. I think you get the point here. Kentballs.com for the blog entry. Let's just hope that there's some kind of angry response and reaction to this fakeness that pervades this site these days. Because it's really sad to see all these folks who actually want to try this stuff out get discouraged and quit because of all this fakeness that pervades this site these days. And before I keep saying YouTube's fake over and over again for the next hour or so, I think I'm going to call it a radio style segment right here. Thanks for listening, everybody. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.